here's the video. And you guys will notice that it becomes choppy at certain points, and that's because you can't write or read fast enough to capture the video. And that's where you get some choppiness in your video. That's why we don't want to try one of these cards. That's just an extra card that I had from an old camera. And that's why I put it in the Mavic just to see how bad the video would be. And yes, the video, if you stand still, nothing's happening, it's okay. However, if you move around, you will get this choppy effect that goes into your video. That's why it's very important to choose a good card when you're buying it for your Mavic. So let me just close this up. Now you guys saw how choppy that video was. Now I opened up right now a really recent video that I made and this is with a good SD card. So I'm just gonna play it for you guys. So this is how a video is supposed to look like. You shouldn't see choppiness. So as it goes, there's no choppiness as you guys can see and it just records just fine. That's what we're looking for when we're purchasing an SD card. So don't go the cheapest way Look for good deals, sure, but look at the read and write speed. That's the most important thing about it. Even when we're moving the Mavic up and down, it's not supposed to get choppy. So I'm just gonna close this for now. And I also wanna highlight right here where they tell you exactly what to get. This is what you're looking for when you're purchasing an SD card. So you're looking for this and grade three at least. Now it doesn't matter how many gigs it has. So for example, the first one that they recommended 64 gigs. That's pretty small because you can put it up to 256 gigs, but it really does depend. I actually recommend getting smaller cards so that way you know to take it out and you won't record maybe too much because hey, something could happen to your drone. So it's better just to change the card out for another one keep that one and then doing that cycle. I think that's best. Now the card that I personally got was 128 gigs, just in case. I think 64 gigs is just fine as well. But obviously if you get a 64 gig, I would get at least two or three of them. For the 128 gigs, for my personal use, two of them is good enough. Now here's a card that I got that was at 45 megabytes per second on write speed. And it wasn't bad, but it wasn't the best. So that's why I had to just bump it up to 100 megabytes per second. And that's the one that you guys saw from before, the winter one. That was 100 megabytes per second. This second one was actually at 45 and it didn't do bad. So it did do just okay. As you guys can see, it's pretty smooth, but it isn't the best that you can do. Because it is, does come with that a bit of choppiness to it once you start moving the camera around. You guys can notice that exactly right now, that vibration. Is kind of weird right which is something that you wouldn't get from a video such as this one this one's a recent one from a card that had a hundred megabytes per second at right speed so let me just play it out so it's just me moving my camera but there's no you saw that shakiness that happened in the other one that vibration type of thing that does not happen when you have the correct card with you so again just look for those cards that have a high write and read speed again it's moving around the camera just fine. There's no vibration going on. If you guys are looking for recommendations, again, the best way to look for them is actually at DJI.com. They have all their recommendations down here. Anyways, if you guys have any comments, questions, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and rate. Thank you.